Hi everyone, welcome back. In this Code With Me activity number eight, we're gonna be talking about JavaScript loops. So let's go ahead and learn about loops. So loops are when you need to perform the same line of code multiple times. Loops will save the day for that. Um, so let's refresh our memory. We did talk about uh, basic functions and functions are little bits of like tiny little programs that we can call to perform similar instructions over and over again that we might end up needing to use in our program. So a loop will allow you to do the same thing over and over repetitively for a certain amount of predetermined loops or until a condition is met. There are three types of JavaScript loops. The first is a for loop, and then we have a while loop, and then we have a do while loop. So I'm gonna briefly talk about all of these and we're gonna look at some examples and then do the code challenge together. Okay, so a for loop, I like to think of it as a self-contained counter, comparison, and increment all in one. So let's take a look at the syntax of a for loop. So you'll see you've got the word for, and again, that needs to be all lowercase, and then you have parentheses. So what we really have here is three statements inside of our for loop. This first one here says i equals zero. So what we're doing is we're declaring a variable i and we're setting its value to zero, okay? The second, the second statement is we're taking a look at the value of i and seeing if it, you know, seeing what we want to do with it here in terms of our loop. And in this example, we're comparing if i is less than 11. So in our case, it is because we're starting it out at zero. And then if it is, it's gonna go ahead and perform the statement inside of here. Now, document.write, if you recall, that will print the value. Well, it'll print whatever is being sent in the parentheses to the HTML document. So in this case, we're coming in at i equals zero. i is zero is less than 11. So we're gonna run this statement one time. So document.write with the value of zero. And then what's gonna happen is this next statement is what happens afterwards. So then we're going to i plus plus, and that means take the value of i and add one to it. So now the value is one, and then it's gonna come back to here that, I mean, it's gonna come back to the comparison. Is one less than 11? And yes, it is. So then it's going to write the number one. Then it's gonna come here and so on and so forth until it gets to 10. So let's say the value of this is 10. Is 10 less than 11? Yes, it is. It's going to write 10. Then it's going to come to I plus plus and that's gonna make it 11. Then it's going to ask, is 11 less than 11? And that would be a no. So once it gets to that point where this comparison is no longer valid, it will exit the for loop and go on to the next statement in your program. Okay, so I have taken that same exact code here um, with the addition of putting an H1 in to show you our for loop example. And let's just take a look and see what it does. So. Here is our for loop example. And you notice, again, we start with zero. Zero is the very first number that gets, gets written to the screen. We go to one, two, three, et cetera, all the way up to 10. Okay, so once it hits 10, that's done, and the, and the loop is done. Now, you might say, well, how do I know that these are really separate numbers? We could actually do something where um, we put an extra parentheses in here, and we do i plus with a space, and close that parenthesis. So now we're saying write this, i plus a space. So let me save it and run it. Oh wait, doesn't like, doesn't like my uh, comments that I have down here. One second. All right, let me run that again. There we go. All right, so now with that tiny little space that I've added, so remember the plus sign in this case is a concatenation. It's going to put the value, it'll replace i with whatever the number is, 
and then it'll put a space. So that's why we've got a zero and a space and a one and a space, etc. All right, so that is a for loop. Again, it's like a nice self-contained little loop with the increment and uh, assignment um, operator and everything in there. So uh, the next one is a while loop. So let's take a look at our while loop and let me just uncomment this out. Okay, so here is our while loop. A while loop is like a loop, a for loop, except that the counter is set and works outside of the loop. Okay, so let's take a look at my example here. So I'm setting a variable called my loop to five. I'm setting my counter to 10. So I'm going to use the word do. So do this statement, document.write my counter, which is 10. And then I'm going to increment 10 to 11 while my counter is less than oops, my loop. All right, let's take a look here. You know, I, d I didn't do that right. My counter should be 1, not 10. That's not a correct line. I'll have to update that again. Okay, so I'm going to uh, write my counter. This makes more sense. While my counter is less than my loop. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and run it. And here is my while, while loop. So I start my counter at 1. And it's going to do the statement. And then it's going to increment it to 2 and two is still less than five. It will write two, et cetera, until we get to four. And then it'll write the four, it'll increment to five, and then the while statement will fail, and that is all it will do. So it will only write uh, one through four. If you wanted to change this to write to five, two, you could do something like less than or equal to my loop. And let's see if we get our five. So let me go ahead and run that. And yes, there we have our five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that is very similar to a for loop, but instead of having everything neatly inside of the, the four right here, we kind of set all that stuff outside and use this do this while this is true. Okay. Hopefully you're, you're with me there, and I will update my slides here. Okay, our next example is called a do while loop, and this is kind of fun. Um, in this example, I have used a, alert, a prompt. So a do while loop is a loop that is executed while a condition is true, so similar to the while loop. Um, and in my example, I have, this is kind of, a little bit of annoying program here. So I start with a variable assignment for my number and I ask the user to type in a number or type zero if they want to exit. And then basically I'm just going to parrot that number back to them. You typed, here's that concatenator again with a space so that I can actually see, read my sentence here. You typed whatever the number is. And so while the number it's not equal to zero, it will constantly do this. So let's see what it looks like, okay? This is why it's important that you have your behaviors set to unchecked, because this will continue. All right, so enter a number or type zero to exit. So there you go, 10, you type 10. This will just keep going. I can do this all night long if I wanted to. And as soon as I type zero, it will, it will tell you, you type zero, and it will exit the program. So there are some examples of loops and how you might want to use them. Uh, again, these are pretty simple examples. If we are, you know, thinking of like a bigger picture here, there might be, you know, calculate time or how many years something happened and maybe you're outputting a different value for every year. A lot of calculator type programs uh, use loops to count and things like that. Okay, um, so let's take a look at our code challenge. So I broke these up into three things so we can practice with our 
four loops. So the first one that I want you to do using the examples we just went through is to create a for loop that will loop through the numbers 1 through 15 with a space between each. So I already showed you how to put the space in there. And again, if you take a look, that is um, just be very careful with the parentheses because you want to have some outer parentheses so that you can have um, two different things going on inside. Okay. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and try that. And you want to look for something that looks just like this, except it's going to say 1 through 15. So you're going to need to take a look at what you initially set your variable to and what your counter is and play with it until you get it right. And then come back and check out what I've got. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look and see how you did with this for loop. Um, all right, so here we go. I, again, I have my document.write for loop example. I am um, setting a variable to total years of 15, but you could technically just have 15 in here as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter in that in that regard. So I'm setting my my variable, my counter variable to one because I want it to print a one first. And then my I is less than or equal to 15. Now again, you might have something different. You could always have I less than 16. So it doesn't have to be the great or the less than equal sign. And then my increment. And so here I've got my document right I plus my spaces. Okay, so you, you probably won't have this and we can just set this to 15 and you won't need the total years. Okay, and actually this uh, one, two, three, four, I think is left over from something else. Okay, there we go. Sorry to confuse you. So that is our one through 15. Okay, let's move on to the next code challenge. So here we are with code challenge 82 for the while loop. So we're going to create a a loop that will loop through the numbers 2 through 20, counting by twos with the space between each number. Okay, so we want this to be a while loop, not a for loop. So, you, I mean, you can do it in a for loop and then turn it into a while loop if you'd like. But remember, the while loop will, will have those variables defined in the top. Take a look at our example from the lecture and try and make that happen. But we're counting by twos. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Okay, uh, play with it and see what you come up with. And I'll meet you back here in a second. Okay, this one was a little trickier because we had to take that into consideration with the twos. So I have set my total years to 20. And I've set a counter to 2 because I want it to start at 2. So I've got my while statement, while counter, which is 2, is less than total years, which is 20, actually. Uh, if I want to display 20, I'm going to need that to be a less than equal than sign. And then I'm going to write the counter, the value of the counter, plus a space. But here I have to add and increment the counter myself. So I'm doing counter equals counter plus 2. And then so it's going to come back while counter, which is now 4, is less than or equal to 20. And then go ahead and output it until we get to 20. So let's go ahead and run this. And here we have our 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Okay, so go ahead and play around with that one. If you didn't get that one right the first try, um, change the numbers around. Maybe try and count by three and see if you are able to modify the code to do that. Okay, let's move on to our last code challenge, and this is the do while loop. So this is going to be kind of fun. We're going to use a do while loop to create a guess my number game between the numbers 1 through 10. You can create a variable with your secret number or make it more fun by coming up with a random number because then you really have to actually play the game. Set a variable that will check if the number was guessed if they were able to get it right and use that as the while condition. 
The new program will run until the correct number is guessed. So I put um, the random. So there is a function called math.floor and math.random. And so what we're doing is here, here's how you can create the secret number. What, what it's doing is it's taking a random number and multiplying it by 10. And then it's taking the floor means to um, take the smaller version of that. So if it's coming up with like a random number of like 3.14 and or 0.34 and then you multiply it by 10, you get 3.4. So math.floor would bring it down to 3, and then 3 plus 1 would be 4. So that's that would come up with a 4. We'll be playing with the random function a lot more in this class as well. So go ahead and try and do a do-while loop with a random number and see if you can figure out how to make it so that if they guess the right number, it has met the condition. Okay? And again, my little hint here is to set a variable, a different variable, not the secret number variable, that will check if the number was guessed if they got it right. And I would recommend that you use that as a Boolean, which is a true false. Okay? All right, so take a couple minutes and try and figure that out, and I'll meet you back here with the solution. Okay, so here we go with our do while loop solution. All right, so what I did was I took that line of code, the var secret number equals math.floor, math.random, and then I created a new variable called you guessed it, and I set it to false. So this is all outside of my loop. That's what the program starts with. Okay, so then I'm going to prompt guess a number between 1 through 10, and I'm going to assign it the variable guess. And then I have an if statement, okay? So this might have been a little challenging, but I'm hoping that some of you guys are able to figure this one out. So if guess, so if what they entered, double equals, because we're doing a comparison, equals the value for my secret number, I'm going to alert, yes, you got it right. My number was, and then I'm going to concatenate my variable, my secret number. Okay, and then I'm going to change you guessed it to true. So if they get it right, it will re it will set that you guessed it to true. And then if not, I'll send an alert that says, sorry, wrong number, try again. And then it's going to go back to guess the number between 1 and 10. And it'll just keep doing that until you guess the number. Okay, so... This is a fun game to play, so let's go ahead and click Run. All right, so guess a number between 1 and 10. Well, logically, I'll start with 1. Sorry, wrong number. 2. Oh, good. Yes, you got it right. My number was 2, and as soon as I click OK, it will stop. So let's play again. Let's see if we have a higher number. 1, 2, 3. Oops, I accidentally hit, a, hit my button twice. 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, huh, that was hard. Okay, so there you have it. Um, again, you can play with this and, and change some things around. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson on loops. Thank you. If you like what you've seen and you want more uh, beginning JavaScript code challenges, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.